What's going on, everyone? Kurt Widener here in the Team Animal Training Compound. And uh, we got a couple requests to do a review of the Rogue Rhino belt squat machine. Um, so my brother-in-law, Dave Capwell, is actually going to be doing this review because this is actually his machine that he picked out. He wanted this. So I'm going to let Dave talk about, um, you know, what his thoughts on this machine are and why he got it. Uh, so it's all yours, Dave. Thanks, Kurt. Um, just a note here, when Kurt decided to do this gym, one of the things I wanted to do was maybe give him a few things that he didn't really put on his priority list that might have been more luxury related, and I kind of felt like it complemented his gym and kind of rounded everything out. So now the Animal Training Compound is a place where anyone with any training needs, whether it be bodybuilding, powerlifting, even strongman, agility, training, cardio, whatever, we got it all. And one of those pieces of equipment I thought was kind of a neat addition would have, was the Rhino belt squat. I kind of really felt a belt squat was a good tool. I've used one before, uh, specifically a pit shark uh, made by Rogue. It wasn't a big fan of that, but with some back injuries I was having doing squats, I really felt like I needed to take the pressure off of my back doing squats. And I really liked the way the belt squat worked because it works more on your hips and uh, posterior chain and without loading your back, which is what I needed to start doing. However, I also found out that having a belt squat, it's not just for squatting. So you can do a lot of other things and I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, one of the things that I had to make a decision on was where to get one. There are a lot of good belt squat machines out there. One of the ones I considered was the Wenning Matt Winning's uh, belt squat, which, I mean, that's pretty expensive. It's custom made, it's about $5,000. I went with Rogue because a lot of our other equipment is Rogue. We have a lot of compatible things um, with this monster. We got a monster squat rack, so any parts from the monster can be used on this. Uh, this is about 1750 plus shipping, a little over 2000. I felt it was a good deal, and it has somewhat of a I don't want to say compact frame, but a concise, it's pretty much a square. And it fit within the gym's dimension, so um, he felt comfortable with it, so we made a go of it. And I'm kind of glad we did it, because it's black, it fits everything, it's solid as can be, because it's a monster, and you get the Rogue uh, customer service, which they'll take care of you if any equipment that you buy from them, which I'll explain later we did need. Um, so, what is it? All right, basically it's a platform with a pulley system that connects right above at the plat base of the platform. The pulley runs underneath, through a tower, over, and onto a trolley. Trolley arms right here, they're big enough to load more weight than you'll ever be able to use because you don't need as much weight for a belt squat as you would a back squat. Um, so these things are pretty extensive. You can load them up. There are also two band pegs on the back, so if you want to add gradual resistance or tension to your lifts, you obviously, you've got these two band pegs right here. There's a stopper at the bottom that prevents the trolley from going too low, and these bolts up here at the top prevent it from going too high. If you fall back, it won't fly off the, the system. The trolley won't fly off the system. Um, the trolley itself is pretty smooth. You can see if I can do this with my hand glides perfectly. This right here is basically a rack. It's a safety rack. The trolley makes contact with this little horn. They call it the rhino horn. You can adjust it depending on your height. You can adjust these levers right here by using a pin and it's got a cotter pin inside of it to keep it locked in place. So basically, pull the weight up, pull it back. You, you hold on to this and it keeps it into position. You let it go, it falls back, and the horn stops it. So you can adjust this based on your height. You can adjust the, this based on your height. The platform itself is pretty sizable. It's diamond plated. It's got a diamond plate covering on it. Um, it's got a carabiner here, and it comes with the Rogue. Rogue's version of its belt for the belt squat. Not a big fan of this. As you can see, 
It's got loops that look like more like a bandolier for shotgun shells. Don't know why that design was used. It's also, you know, it's pretty flimsy in my opinion. And the padding is kind of stiff and not really that. It's just kind of cheap in my opinion. But Kurt fortunately had a spud strap, which obviously you can see the difference here. You've got three, they're um, like brass or steel hooks on them. They connect and you can see how it conforms to your body. It's a lot more comfortable and offers a lot more stability. Even though it's not padded, this is the one way to go. I would Co definitely buy A this. couple things about that belt. Dude, I actually got that, I think, off of Rogue. You can probably get it directly from Spud, but I think I actually may have bought that from Rogue site. And that is their adjustable version, which is the nice thing with that belt is that pretty much anybody of any size can use it because you have three sets of hooks. And I, I think they might make another one that doesn't have that, but that is the adjustable one. It, it does add some versatility. One um, added function to that, which is nice, um, if you've watched my knees over toes video, we use that belt for doing backward sled walks, which comes in really handy because we actually have two different spud belts, one that I use for dips, and then that one, I hook one to each end of the sled, and you can do, you know, backwards in both direction to get your knees over toes stuff. So let's, any other questions you think I need to address on how it's made, Kurt? No, I mean, I, th I, th I think that's, uh, you know, pretty pretty comprehensive as far as what you covered so far. So All right, well, yeah, just give a little, little is, demo. Go ahead and show you how you can use this. And I'm going to make sure I do this the right way because it's a... Uh, you talk about this carrot meter because that yeah. is one... It's, issue it's got a it's like a twist before it locks and you got to twist it before you do it it's just something you got to get used to it's not as just a simple push in i'll be honest is it, it seems like a cool like as a safety mechanism it's a neat carabiner but it, it actually kind of is a little i find it to be a little bit of a pain in the ass it's a little um, tricky. It, you your know the brain ha has to adapt having to, to twist it. it especially when you're you start getting tension on there um i'd almost rather have a regular carabiner but you know everybody's got their preferences so so just for showing the versatility on the thing on the machine i'm going to go ahead and loop two bands around it on each post and you can see how they hook there it's nice having the band pegs but the problem with it it's coated in this black paint it's slick it's a rough you know some of these the rogue bands are actually kind of have a textured surface unlike some of them are, are actually are slick like the west side bands um, the problem you can have is if this thing goes down low enough and this is the tensions not there They can slide off there either needs to be a I don't know like a post cover on the end of these things to keep them from flipping off or have the um, The uh, band pegs textured in some way and I think that would help but You just got to live with it Till you find your own method of fixing it so sorry right, we've got the bands on there and we put some lightweight on here just to illustrate again you can see 25 pound plate you gotta imagine 45s going all the way across and even the bands are taking up the space of a 45 you're gonna have more space to lift on this than you'll ever more weight to put on it than you ever could use so and i'll just go ahead and say that anybody who's like maxing this out as far as Putting all the plates on there is doing horse shit squats. If you're sitting there putting like, you know, six and eight plates per side, then you're you're probably not really actually doing anything. Cause okay, we're just a standard. Like I said, I, I put, hook the thing in. You basically stand up, pull back, and then you've got the whole tower to work with. So if you want to just do your standard um, squat, see how the band's coming out there. That's something you have to worry about, but we wanted you to see that, that that is a problem. The other thing you can do with this that I like, it's a good warm up for uh, squats. And Kurt actually told me this, is basically stand back and do what's, what I call good mornings. You can do them with this thing out here. And you just basically go do your lockouts, push back. And a lot of times you don't even need to take the post off. You can just stand up and do it. But just doing a good morning, pushing back, and then locking your hips out. Probably one of the best warm-ups for any kind of leg workout I can think of. Because it'll tire you out, put that band pegs on there, the band tension, 
put a couple 45s on each side, you've got more than enough weight to really get your posterior chain moving. The other thing that I like about this is that it's versatile. So not only the variations of squat exercises or whatever on that, you can put a myriad of attachments. Wanna do curls? Throw on the straight bar. Face the other way. And it doesn't work with the band tension on there, that's for sure. You take the band. <laughs> You don't want band tension on for curls, at least the I'll green do bands. Facing out. So again, you don't even need to touch the bar. You do that. Upright rows. You could put the uh, belt on. Do calf raises, probably use these as a, I would step on the back. I would keep yourself on the platform generally. Um, I'll explain why. You can use this attachment or a rope. And you can do rows, you know, uh, pull throughs, whatever you wanna do. So, I mean, it's endless what you can do. You can get as creative, Kurt and I find out how to do things we need to, things we're working on that aren't recommended or even thought of. We invent our own stuff all the time on all kinds of equipment here. So we like the versatility of it. It comes in handy. Now let's go through a little, a few things that I think you should consider. One, the footprint, while not huge, still could be smaller. This thing goes out about six inches past the weight pegs. I don't see anyone needing, I mean, I guess you could do sumo style. I don't see a need for that for a belt squat machine. They moved it in six inches. They could make it a little more compact and still have the weight, um, the weight, uh, I guess the weight capacity that it has now. So that's something that's a little Dave bigger than Dave. it needs What's to be. The actual measurement on that side to side. 49 inches. Yeah, so just a little over four feet across. And you're looking at approximately about 44, 45 inches <clears throat> deep. And you want to look at the height as far as the tower to the floor. Let's see, about 70, 78 inches. So it's taller than it is wider or deep. Um, couple things that I had experience with this and this is I'm glad I was dealing with Rogue I ordered this what'd you say the gym was finished in uh, we opened up the gym on the Thanksgiving day of 2020 I ordered this obviously all gym equipment was not you it was hard to get back in the spring and summer last year I put in an order for it I guess, or to be notified when it was in stock because it was out of stock. It took about three months before I finally could get one. So I think I had it sent to my house in August, July or August of last year. It sat in my garage on a pallet. Um, it is freight delivery and it was like 250 bucks to um, ship it. So that's something you want to consider. And when we assembled it, so it was sitting in there for three, four months and then we assembled it. And something just wasn't right. What had happened was when they, if you uh, come on over here, Kurt, I'm gonna show. There is a bolt here. When this this tro this tower came pre-assembled, I did not. You're not required to assemble that. The cable in there was threaded outside the bolt, so it pushed alongside this and when it came down here it was rubbing up against the metal and it scraped off the um, plastic coating of the cable and it created friction and it was like something's just not right i thought i'd put it together wrong that wasn't the case um someone else that i saw in a review had pointed that it was threaded wrong in the assembly so once i figured that out 
they sent me a new cable. The first cable that they sent was too short. They finally sent me a second cable and I routed it behind this bolt cross bolt here and we've had no problems ever since. It took a couple months to get all that done, but essentially it was done. Rogue has good customer service. That's a big plus for getting that, um, for considering the belt squat, Rhino belt squat. The other thing to consider is this right here is on a platform that's a, a kind of like, a, it's a rubber mat. If it's on solid concrete, I would suggest you bolt it down because it will slide. Um, it's just metal on concrete, on smooth polished concrete is not good. So they do have the capability of being bolted down. We don't need to bolt it down. And I would also consider bolting it down if you were doing anything off the machine where the weight was on there and you were pulling it off the, the weight on this is very front so, front heavy, so all of your weight on this machine is up here where the trolley system is where you load the weights. The back end of this, where you see these these uh, back feet, that end of this machine slides very easily. So it being on rubber mats keeps it from sliding as easily, but if you have this on straight concrete floor, it'd be all over the place. And I think one last thing to um, emphasize with this is that the Monster... It's got all the monster holes and everything. One of the things that I will eventually maybe do, I don't know, um, we're in a position where it's not really feasible to do this, but you can take the spotter arms off of a monster rack and put them on here, and you can put a barbell here, and you can actually hook yourself up to the, um, to the belt squat and set a weighted bar and basically use it as a training platform, kind of like West Side's athletic training platform where you can adjust this and basically do deadlifts with the weight pulling down to help your lockouts and stuff. There's a myriad of things you can do with this. Again, it's a monster. Um, so it's compatible with any monster material. So you can get creative and do crazy stuff on it if you want. Uh, that in and of itself, I can't think of anything more to add. Is there anything that we didn't cover, Kurt? No, I think that, that pretty much covers everything. So, I mean, uh, if anybody's considering a belt squad, and particularly the Rogue belt squad, I mean, that, that kind of shows you complete functionality of what it can do, you know, the amount of space it takes up, um, you know, should, should give them a good feel for it. So it's a solid piece of equipment. Again, it's monster. So it's overbuilt and heavy, but we like it. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thanks Dave. Appreciate it. And, um, hope everyone enjoyed the video. Um, it's a good, great review. Uh, please remember to hit like and subscribe. And if anybody has any questions or comments or content that they want to see in upcoming videos, uh, please comment below, shoot me a message, and we will add it to our list. Uh, have a great Sunday, everyone. Uh, get after it.